everybody, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Halo Combat Evolved. Yes, the mission that I'm uh, canceling out of is this one. So, Sound Like Cartographer. This is an excellent map. Um, an excellent mission because, god damn, it's fucking beautiful. Shut my mouth and turn the audio up. Covenant believe that what they call the Silent Cartographer is somewhere under this island. The Cartographer is a map room that will lead us to Halo's control center. The island has multiple structures and installations. One of them contains the map room. Down. All right. Go time. So I'm going to talk about some weird. I just had this weird thought. Um, I took a little break. As you may or may not notice, to uh, so this is another reason why this is a fantastic map. You get this, you get this fucking beaches of Normandy moment. Um, so I was having this weird thought. Age in video games is always shown differently, but there's a few consistent uh, ways to show it. And uh, one of the best ways is to give your character gray hair. Woo. Give the uh, character gray hair that they didn't have before, and facial hair of some variety. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 is an excellent example. Prior to this, Solid Snake has stubble, if that, and um, brown hair. In Metal Gear Solid 4, he has a mustache and gray hair. Uh, Kratos in God of War 4 has grayer hair and um, a long beard as opposed to a short beard that he has in the other games. Up on, fellas. Okay, let's move out. Let's go find oh man, this is going to be good. Uh, and he's obviously a lot, you know, more aged, more kratos -y. Uh, and I was always thinking it would be a very interesting Legend of Zelda game. My ideal Legend of Zelda game is, for those who don't know, Zelda is about uh, an eternal recurrence, where uh, there's always going to be a guy named Link in a green tunic. There's always going to be a girl named Zelda in a dress, and she's going to be a princess. And there's always going to be a big mean guy called Ganon or something tied to the Triforce of Power. And Link has Courage and Zelda Wisdom. Um, and the Triforces are mythological symbols that make them deistic. You know, so Link's practically a demigod. Um, Ganon is a little bit more of a demigod. But an idea that I always had for my ideal one was someone fucks up the cycle. Which ended up happening in um, Breath of the Wild. Uh, though not in the way that I had intended. And Breath of the Wild, Ganon is, um... Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Ganon is resurrected improperly. And so because he's be between resurrections, he's kind of... I'd have with this. Uh, stuck between the spirit world and the real world, which makes him the strongest Ganon yet. But I was thinking it would be interesting if it instead it happened to Zelda. Just because I like this one. Oh man, this guy died. That sucks, bro. Anyway, I think it'd be interesting if... As, like, one of the timelines Zelda's died. One of the timelines. Oh god, have Austin Powers did, did it? Gone the wrong shagging way. Let's keep going inside. I'm not sure if this is gonna work out. Anyway, 
So I always thought it'd be interesting if... Don't let them like, one of the links fucked up. Oh shit, wait. Yeah, I have to stop them. Damn. Oh wait, now I have another chance. My analysis indicates that the this is, a, the this is probably going to be a little better if we go. Nope. Let's keep yeah, let me out of here. Inside. Anyway, so... There's a new set of Link, Zelda, and Ganon. But then Ganon kills that Zelda, but that Link doesn't die. So I always thought it'd be interesting. See, that was a little too much. A little too quick. I thought it'd be interesting if... So there was a Link that survived. And he's fighting this old Ganon, or maybe even this young Ganon from, the, from a fresh reincarnation. And also trying to protect a, a youthful Zelda. Damn. Oh well. This isn't going great. Let's keep going inside. See, so yeah, it's trying to protect a youthful Zelda. So you've got gruff old man uh, protagonist of a prior game. Don't let them lock the doors. And then, damn. Wait, Nate, no, those are alive. Those are alive. All right, now we can fight. I underestimated the Covenant's understanding of Halo subsystems. See, so I think there's divergent paths in this. And we don't have enough firepower to get through them. In this level. Cortana to keys. Based on whether or not you can get through there. I can't remember though. Have you found the control center? Negative, Captain. Anyway, so it would always interest me to see an old link and a young Zelda. And then maybe even Understood. see a third uh, a third cycle. And see a old Zelda and young Link. But then that happened with God of War. Like, you have baby Atreus. He's not a baby, but, you know. He's oh my god, I fucking pancaked myself between the wall. I'm not even taking this fucking thing. What's the point? Anyway, yeah, that's basically the plot of God of War 4. Yeah, I would love the idea of old Grandpa Link with gray hair and a beard taking care of young, like, four-year-old Zelda until she turns, like, six. And then it'd almost be like a... Oh, God, like a uh, uh, Last of Us. So now I've run into a thing where we're probably supposed to have a vehicle here. Based on the wide open area. But you're free to do whatever you want, you know? It's a video game. Anyway, yeah, I love the idea of... Like, Grandpa Link has to raise the new Zelda. That was pretty... That was pretty baller. If I do say so myself. And then that Link dies either from old age or something. Wow, he just cleaned me. Oh, shut up. Fine, I'll take the fucking thing. And then you have that Zelda from the second loop raising the new baby Link. Like, the idea of a Link that's like 80 years older than his Zelda. Maybe not 80. Maybe like 60. And then a Zelda that's like 20 years older than her Link. I like that, because they're usually the same or a very similar age. So you can see how you're very clearly supposed to go through this with a, a car. Just look at this fucking place. <laughs> God, the way that they just like lifted up the fucking the car with their gunshots. The car couldn't land for a little bit, guys. Please, I'm already dead. Anyway, yeah. 
great idea, but that that was just God of War 4. The gunner dead? Pretty sure he's dead. You're around here somewhere, Elite, aren't you? There you are. Give me your gun. So one of the ways that they show, um, and yeah, I love to see, I love to see that, but I also love the idea of parodying that. One of my favorite uh, videos is this Source Filmmaker video. Uh, it's a par it's the new God of War, but it's Devil May Cry. Because when Devil May Cry Five was coming out, no one knew what the fuck it was going to be about. But God of War Four had already come out. And God of War and Devil May Cry have always been, like, counterparts to each other. Uh, I think they came out in the same year, 05. Or no, Devil May Cry 3 and God of War uh, 1 came out in the same year, 05, I think. And they are um, just very good examples of the Japanese and American takes on the character action game or the stylish action game. Yeah, so it's DMC4 Dante, but he, the, the video, it's DMC4 Dante, and he's got a beard and uh, an axe to replace, you know, his, his trusty weapon. Uh, and he's got a shitty shit kid. And it's weird how much of that actually ended up coming true in God of War, uh, in Devil May Cry 5, rather. Wow, this is... That's weird. The ring changes location. I guess this is probably more in line with actual orbits. God, I feel like I'm in Banana Land. And look at that edge. <laughs> Sheesh. Oh yeah, the Famine Skull. See, so yeah, that's actually where you find it. I don't know the locations of all the terminals and skulls here. Oh, nice. So, you know, forgive me. Yes, I've got it. I know. Get this shit off my screen. Jeez. I don't know if you saw that. You might have seen the Steam achievement, but not the Xbox one, but yeah. I got fucking stuck on my screen. So when they showed Chief getting older, um, they put a, a, a cloak on him. And the idea of a cloak over power armor is really interesting, because, like, what's it there for? Is it keeping you warm? Why? What's the purpose, you know? And, like, it looks dope, you know? Caped mechas are amazing. Caped power armor is less so, but still cool. You guys, hop in. Showtime. And get out of the way. Thank you. Thank you. I totally forget where I'm supposed to go. I guess I'll just complain about a uh, video game some more. Anyway, Chief getting older. I would love to see Chief getting older represented in the traditional way, where it's just Chief has a deeper voice. It's grittier, gruffer. And uh, he's got a beard on, just out on outside of his armor. Like it sticks out through the helmet. I'm not entirely sure where it would go, but it amuses me greatly. I want to get some like Halo Mega Blocks. I haven't built with those in a while. All right, where the fuck am I supposed to go? Imagine I I I made some mistake here at some point. As I said, um, this is a game I don't know super well. Wow, this cave is a shithole. Uh, yeah, I don't know this game super well, and uh, I've never beaten it. So, you know, pardon me. Ooh, an overshield. I'll take that. Mm -hmm. 
it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, this thing is a a ring, I guess. It's an island, so you can go around it in a whole circle. Wow. So what does it look like down here with this on? God, if I was supposed to just stay down here, then... Jeez, how embarrassing. <laughs> Excuse me, everyone. I'm really dumb. The textures here are still very... Uh, well, I wouldn't say very, but they're pretty solid. Not too much to write home about, but, you know, you can see the work. Okay. I feel good that I wasn't supposed to go in there, but bad that I uh, fucked around and wasted everyone's time. And I get back in. Come on. There you go. I'm noticing that, like, for the most part, the main difference between the two is that this one is so much darker. But yeah, there's a lot of um, very classical, very striking imagery here because you can see the planet in Halo very prominently. Um, there's these beautifully done cliffs all over the place. And you can see Forerunner technology jutting out of open cliffs. That's... that is fantastic. Is it up here? Oh my god, there's a grunt up here I never killed. Hey, man. There's two grunts up here. Okay, so it's this way. Well, at the very least, I showed off... Um... Yeah, thanks, guys. I went back and I showed off the... Uh... The old bad textures of... This place. There really should just be, like, a Spartan with a beard. Um, so, for those who have played Destiny, this, 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 like, motif, this look, this shows up in a lot of different places in Destiny. There's a lot of areas in Destiny that look like this. And there's a lot of areas in Halo as well that look like this, but this is just one of the first, like, areas where you really get the ability to see, like, this is that kind of thing that Bungie likes to build, you know? Bungie likes this. Like this like little dish here. I, I I see this I saw this all over the place when I was still playing Destiny. Hey, it's another one of these. I'm gonna boost my audio, so you might hear a little it is uh, from me. Three thousand years since my last contact with any of the other caretakers of the Halo array. Despite clear communications protocol, my fellow monitors have either chosen to ignore or more likely. So have we have a name for those things. Those little drone audience. fellows are called monitors. And this is also where we get the first uh, that instance that there are seven Halo rings. Prior to this total communication shutdown, the only messages I received in the preceding 4,573 years were incomplete and quite... I don't know, but that's probably... That number is probably a multiple of seven. Because everything in Bungie is always seven or a multiple therein. I suspected that monitor 2401... I know for a fact that 2401 is... Uh, seven to the power of four, I want to say. I have locked my concerns about his ability to And the most prominent duties. monitor is point, however, uh, I'm not sure 343 Guilty I'm Spark. And 343 is 7 to the power of 3. There are fail -safes for this, I know. And there's another one called 49, which is just 7 squared. 
I will continue to visit the projection systems yeah. at the Yeah, Bungie, Bungie loves Seven, as we've discussed. The other are dealing with interfering galactic phenomena. They even have a seven-step plan for taking over the world. I wonder where that is now. Like where they're at. Funny on is he used to be such a cool company. Indeed. You know their official company motto was just Latin for "Don't make us kick your ass." In the meantime, I have exhausted all scheduled research activities assigned by the council. Once those experiments were complete, I shut down all sentinel function and put myself into a state of significant hibernation to measure performance of the installation with negligible upkeep. Back down. After 150 years with no noticeable impact upon installation systems or integrity. So a thing that uh, gets discussed in the books a lot is rampancy, which I believe I've mentioned. Where certain AIs um, kind of just go crazy after a certain amount of point. For most human smart AIs, which is to say AIs that can learn, um, that's seven years, because everything is seven. Uh, Rambency is different in different uh, AIs. Sometimes it is very analogous to human dementia. Um, sometimes it's, you know, stereotypical madness and sanities and shit. Um, the reason for some of that is because dumb AIs, you know, AIs that don't learn are just built. They're coded. But smart AIs are based off of uh, human brain, which is actually what Cortana is. She is based off of a scan of Dr. Halsey's brain. However, normally this kills whoever, uh, who's, who's ever brain it is. In Halsey's case, she cloned herself. She cloned her own brain. So here we can see, if you're really down on your luck, but you're fighting a classic Halo 1 Hunter, there's a lot that you can get done with strafing and melee. There you go. One of the episodes of uh, Wooly Plays uh, Halo, Halo 1 or Halo 3, I believe, is just called Strafe the Hunter for that reason. It's so bizarre to me that Wooly's playing all the Halos. Yeah. Got a fucking who sings this song? It's dum ba dun da ba da dum ba dun da 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 dun. Another photograph in your mind. That is memory. Yeah, something like that. It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right. I hope you had the time of your life. It's not Blink-182, is it? Yeah, chain reaction. So here um, you can start to see that like you're going to want a little more in the way of Plasma weaponry when fighting shields. Nice combat roll, dickhead. I can hear my brother-in-law yelling at the TV. I know for a fact that he's playing Apex Legends with his friend on the internet. All right. Like, look at this. Look at this beautiful-ass tree. And granted, it looks shitty here, but this beautiful-ass tree juxtaposed by this technology. And, like, there's an implication that the tree is younger than the technology. The technology is older than the tree. Like, I know that there's not too much, you know, evidence for how fast these trees grow. But considering how long these, you know, these installations, these these buildings have been here. How much longer have the trees been here, you know? So these have to be fresher trees. I 
Honestly, I do really like the look. Uh, oh, oh, okay, cool. I do like the look of uh, certain games of this era. Morrowind, uh, Halo 1, like, they do look pretty solid. The fact that they have an art style and that they're not trying to convey realistic shit is helpful. Excuse me, Mr. Hana. Because, yeah, Morrowind is its own culture, society, civilization, island, everything. And, like, if they tried to do that even with Skyrim or Oblivion, it wouldn't work because those are too realistic. But Morrowind is just so weird enough that the limited graphics can end up working. And with this, like, it's all the Covenant and all the installation and... You know, there's so much Forerunner and Alien and Covenant tech that... Thank you, sir. Hunter's haunted. Um, yeah, there's so much Alien here. And you spend, you know, not too much of it on board, you know, human stuff that... The weird Alien stuff looks better by comparison, you know? You at least see more of it. Which is good. It allows it allows the game to breathe a little more. When it's not trying to worry about too much realism and it has all this like sci-fi shit. Which is again appreciable. And like a lot of games of this era are just really ugly. And I I just kinda wish that um I mean I, I intend to develop games at some point. I really want to see, um... Good. That should open the door that leads into the main shaft. Wow, that guy looks so fucking rad. It's quiet. Yeah, I wish, um, I wish that... Because I intend to develop games, and I like the art style and looks of games of the early 2000s. But holy shit, sometimes those games are so fucking ugly. <laughs> like, I'll be honest, sometimes those games look like shit. <laughs> like, this is passable, but, like, it hurts my eyes after coming from this, right? Like, just embarrassing. Like, at the time, that was new, you know? I feel like I'm saying that a lot. Uh, my dad's a significant snob for graphics. And, like, I am, too. Don't think I'm not. Totally lost him. Yeah. The reason I'm saying it so much is probably because I'm also reminding myself to give this piece of shit a chance, because it's good. It is good. But, man, it's tacky. Let's see if I can't get down here quick like. I can't. Bravo 22 was Oh, the overshields. After I saw we were up against hunters, nice. I thought you could use them. Let's move down the beach. Keep an eye out for any cargo we can salvage. See so yeah, this thing fucking crashed, rip. However, that means that we have access to this shit. Including this little darling. Tension hold like this. <laughs> All right. Hey, what's up? Bonk. All right. Now we just got to get back to the the place next to the place. God, this is so beautiful. I can't remember if you actually go to a Halo and that's cool. In uh, in three, I can't remember if you go to a Halo. I know you spend time on the Ark, which is a similar installation. Um, though it's technically the opposite of a Halo. We'll get into it when we play Halo Three, which I actually don't know when. I have dates set for two and ODST, but not for three yet. But yeah, um. 
when we get there, we'll talk about it. But the Ark is a is a thing designed to protect against the Halo. Since, you know, Halo is the most destructive weapon system in... ever. Possibly to this day. Like, there's a, there's a big problem of scaling whenever you have big shit. Like, um, I'm gonna talk about Star Wars again, but, oh my god, a Boston Towers did. Yeah, squeeze it out of there. There you go. But, like, Star Wars, the very first Star Wars features the Death Star, which can blow up a planet. And that's a big fucking deal. And so when the time came to make some more Star Wars, they were really like, well, shit, now what? Because, yeah, now what? You started with the ability to blow up a planet. So, and, you know, this is just part of the weakness of the Star Wars uh, sequels. But, yeah, the only new thing in the Star Wars sequels, technology-wise, is something that can blow up a planet more than once. Whoa, it blows up more than one planet? Crazy. Shafted. Nice. Nice. So yeah, I'm I, I have mentioned that I think that that's silly, lazy, and overall just tacky. I'm like, oh it can blow up a planet. Well shit, where do we go from that? What about if it blows up more than one planet? Like, no, you're not going to make it cooler. And, like, Star Wars already had that problem in Episode 6, where they're like, Oh, what's the Empire doing now? Oh, they're making another Death Star. Oh, great. Oh, no. Not that. People gave Star Wars Episode 7 shit for just being... Star Wars Episode 4 again. But honestly, that's... I don't think that's valid. Because episode 6 and 1 are also just Star Wars episode 4 again. But yeah, so the Halos, I can't remember if I mentioned this yet, and this is kind of a spoiler, but they extinguish all life in the galaxy besides the stuff that's contained on the Ark, and maybe I think Shield Worlds as well. So, you know, there's that. We got a... Yep, hunters. Anything better? Oh, wait. I want to do this. I want to see what shooting this thing looks like here. Pretty similar. The reason that this looks um, different from Reach is because they have to change it to fit with this halo but all those things are from this one halo has such a balancing act between overblown ridiculous action movie dialogue and legitimate military stuff I i've mentioned how halo has so much military fetishism that you would think it's actually a fetish. I've talked about how, like, how much time and attention is given to, oh, we spent $20 billion on this, you know? Shooting this thing once is a million dollars, even though GDP is, like, the G in GDP now means global. And there's more than one of those. Like, multiple planets' economies have to be considered, so inflation is at ridiculous stages. But anyway, um... The, the fetishism of realism in military shooters versus the fetishism of action movies... Yeah, sometimes I just feel like Halo doesn't really... I feel like it's not balanced as well. 
Because that's like a random guy, and he's like, let's set the table, everyone. It's not, it's not Sergeant Johnson, because Sergeant Johnson does that shit all the time. Mm. You know, that's, that's how he does. That's his trademark. Just something I wish to comment on. I don't think it's necessarily bad, but... For a lot of this game, um, the seriousness of it is, you know, it's treated harshly because, like, oh, shit, it's the Halo, you know? If they get a hold of this, they could blow up everything. And, like, this this is this is the, the keystone. This thing is the thing that'll lose or win the war for someone. And considering the war is all of mankind or, like, seven alien races... At this point, we only know of three um, elites, grunts, and jackals, but there's also the engineers who don't show up until ODST. That structure appears to be some sort of temple or shrine, if I've interpreted this correctly. Uh, the brutes who don't appear yet. Oh, the hunters, so we know about four. A shrine is an unlikely place to put such a significant installation. Is it? How would you know? Cortana to Captain Keys. Oh, wait, hold on. I want to look at how this looks. Pretty similar. I guess that makes sense, though. Wireframes are easy to render, considering that a wireframe is the skeleton. It's the most basic form of a render. Like, the thing about a wireframe is that it's not going to look that much better. Because it's the worst looking thing in 3D. I gotta say, I was thinking about keys and how much it pisses me off, and I realized that Halo really only has like no, I don't want to say that. Halo has very, very specific character tropes that they do. Oh, yeah. but they've got bo boring military shooter guy, and there there are different ways that that trope is executed. And sometimes it's done very well. Where you have people like Carter, Noble Six, um, Chief himself, uh, the rookie from ODST, the fucking Arbiter. And like, all those are great. But then on the flip side, you have boring military guy who just fucking gets on my nerves. Like, what's his name? John something? John Ford from Halo Wars? I hate that guy. I'm still talking about how I hate him, but we're like two games in now. Like, I'm so happy he died, I'm just upset that he that it didn't happen earlier, and that also he lived to begin with. Like, I won't be happy until, like, what's that guy's name? John Ford? Like, I, I'm, I'm not even sure of it, but like, I won't be happy until that guy is erased from history. I hate that guy so much. And Captain Keys is another example. Like, I don't even know what it is about him. It's just, he's so annoying to me. Maybe it's because he's, it's not just because he has the shitty, um, escort quest. That's a, that is a, a factor. But, like, I just... It ticks me off that they think that that one guy can be that important. Like, a lot of reasons that Chief is so important is because he's the right man in the right place at the right time. Which is, you know, a, a function of that luck we talked about. And that's ill-defined and doesn't necessarily make sense. But, like, Cortana says it. You know, characters in-universe comment on it. Which means that it does exist in universe, but she is lucky. And he's lucky in ways that others aren't, you know? That's why Noble Six only gets one game before dying. That's why the rookie isn't a Spartan.
On the topic, Sergeant Johnson works. Nope, I want this one. Like, Sergeant Johnson is fantastic. And other attempts to do that same character, like, um... Buck, I think, in uh, ODST. Uh, fucking Nathan Villian. I, I don't think it works as well. I mean, there's only so many characters in Halo. And, like... They, they're they almost forced to be a certain way because of the game itself. Like, the characters in Halo have to be generic shooter man because this is a shooter. You know, they have to be military personnel because this is, a you know, ultimately a military simulator. Punch animation for this thing. Like, it's great. Even though it's so time consuming. Like this one? Yeah, you just swing this fucking thing. This is a voice line or something, um. Where, uh. Oh boy. Anyway, some miscellaneous soldiers mentioned how um, you shouldn't be afraid to swing this thing. Because, like, even though it looks very frail and light and weak, uh, this thing's fucking tough as shit. And with good reason. It's the Covenant Go 2, so it's nearly indestructible. It just, it's, it's just a thing of, like, because it looks like a toy, you know? It does look like a toy, and you would expect it to just fall apart if you hit anything with it. Or even, like, shot something with it too much. And, you know, that should also be the case, but it's not, because of story reasons. And I like that someone explicitly mentions, like, yeah, for whatever reason, this thing's really tough. Don't know why. Weird. Anyway. Oh, he's strafed all the way around here. Sneaky, but ultimately useless. A storm is approaching, and it is me. This is the way back, right? Yeah. A little subtle thing you can notice, um... That at first, Chief descends, you know, to get information from the Forerunners. And granted, it's in the form of a USB flash drive, essentially. But he descends to get that, as though he's making a deal with the devil. Much, much better. Much better. Good, Chief. And then he ascends afterwards, because it has given him more power. Reading a little too much into it there, I know. Just because someone heads in a downward direction does not mean that they're making a deal with the devil, but... Depth is is a part of the Forerunners, you know? The Forerunners are buried underneath. They are obscured. They are hidden. Sorry, I'm focusing in hardcore on to shooting these fellas. Let me in. Radical. Hmm? Let's get moving. Foehammer, here are coordinates in a flight plan I've worked on. Uh, Cortana, these coordinates are underground. The Covenant did a thorough seismic scan, and my analysis shows that Halo is honeycombed with deep tunnels, which circle the whole ring. I hope your analysis is on the money, Cortana. This pelican won't turn on a dime. Look on the 
bright side, Philhammer. The last thing the Covenant will expect is an aerial insertion from underground. So yeah, again, it's so implausible how fucking huge this place is. How could you possibly honeycomb the entire... Just remember, this is 400 times the size of Earth. Assault in the control room. Oops, hold on. Uh, hey, that's the episode, though. Um, I've been Alfred. Thanks for coming by saying, hey. Uh, this has been Halo Combat Evolved. And uh, I think I think that's everything. I'll see you guys next time, then. Bye-bye.